HOS, how to automate the heck out of everything. And I can't tell you how excited I am because I know we're all too busy. So this will hopefully give us some, some great tips on how to make our lives easier. Uh, about Jonathan, he is the founder of Spotlight Podcasting Agency, and he uses automation extensively for client delivery. He is a self-confessed geek, yay, and he constantly keeps up to date with the latest trends in technology and tools related to productivity, so guaranteed to be a good 30 minutes. Jonathan, I'm handing it over to you. Great. Thanks, Heather. Um, I really appreciate you having me. Uh, very kind of you. So as I was telling Heather earlier, I've got quite a lot to get through, so I'm going to just basically dive straight in, shall we? All right, so um, yeah, the topic of today is to go through lots of different use cases around automation. And I'm gonna try and uh, cover quite a few things. Um, there are a lot of comments that came up on LinkedIn, and so I'm gonna try and answer some of those as well. Um, and hopefully uh, there'll be something for everyone here. But before we, before we start, I'll just, uh, add a couple of disclaimers. So first of all, I'm not a guru. Uh, I do not have all the answers. Um, basically, I'm you know figuring things as I go along as we all are basically, uh, but I am a big automation enthusiast. As Heather mentioned, I use it a lot for my own work for the agency I run. Um, so yeah, these are just a lot of things that I picked up along the way that I think other people will find helpful. Um, this will be uh, a little bit heavy on the Apple side of things. So I do apologize to PC users, Android. I'm sorry. I know you're second class citizens. Uh, just kidding. Uh, but there will be some platform agnostic stuff. Okay. Um, and I do realize, you know, there are people at all different stages. So some of the stuff I'll be talking about will just go way over people's heads and other people will just be like, oh, this is a piece of cake. Why is he telling this? But I'm hoping that I can just kind of give enough for anyone at any level to really sink their teeth into. Okay, um, there's gonna be no selling apart from, uh, you know, if you do have an automation problem that you're really struggling with, I do offer 15 minute consults to help you walk you through that. Um, and you can basically book 15 minutes. I try and help you out. If I can't help you out, you get your money back. So um, it's uh, basically a win-win really. Um, here are some glowing reviews by uh, you know some uh, fabulous people, including my wife, my aunt, my uh, Tia, my uh, aunt from Columbia and, uh, and my mom as well. Thanks, mom. Uh, so you can see, you know, they uh, really value my, uh, my technical prowess. Uh, and, um, but if you're curious, as Heather mentioned, my, my main day job is uh, running a podcast agency, and I'm going to be sharing some of the automations that we uh, use as part of that. We basically help people launch, produce shows. We take care of all the technical malarkey. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, first of all, uh, when to start automating, when you should consider automating, what part of the process and uh, that we should really think about um, when automating, where does it come into, and how does that work versus delegating, for example. Uh, secondly, we're going to look at different automation platforms and how to choose the right one to use. Uh, we're going to dive into an easy example uh, around sort of automating recurring tasks that anyone can do. Uh, and then we're going to go into sort of everyday automations, like things you might do as part of your everyday uh, you know, text expanders, email management, location reminders. So a lot of different use cases. Um, content automations is something that came up a lot. I know a lot of people either live or in the replay, uh, you know, you may be solopreneurial consultant and you're doing your own marketing. Um, so we're gonna dive into some things that I think might be, be helpful there. And then finally, we're gonna do a little bit of business automation. And if there are any, if there's a bit of time, maybe, uh, you know, if you have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. We don't have time. Uh, I'll share my contact details at the end and you can follow up that way. Uh, and then also just finally, I'm going to share some like really crazy complex automation stuff just to, just to show you what's, what's really possible. Okay. So first off, uh, when we think about when to automate, Oh, and by the way, you know, Heather, at any point, if you feel like jumping in, please do. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that license Got to it. do that. Um, but first of all, uh, you know, when we consider when to automate, um, well, there was this great comment that came up, uh, Lee, um, who uh, said, you know, she had a question around, well, how do you determine what's worth automating versus delegating? Um, and it's a great question. And the way I like to think about it um, is, uh, well, this is good visualization, basically. I, I like to think of it in stages, right? You know, what, first of all, you take the tasks you have, you figure out what's really not, you know, worth paying too much time on why is there anything I, I can cut out of this this mess of tasks that I have that's not really super necessary um, and then from those 
down to automation. Automation, I, I usually find, comes before delegation. Uh, and then finally, you concentrate or you procrastinate, basically. Um, this is from a book called uh, Procrastinate on Purpose. Um, now, that said, uh, I would add like a little caveat here is I think between the uh, eliminate and automate stage, um, there's a question of like simplifying things. Um, it's very, I think it's sometimes easy to just like come up with these really complex automations, uh, but the simpler you can make it, the easier it is to be to trouble basically set up, but then eventually like troubleshoot and figure out, okay, what did, what did I set up? Um, so I think, you know, simplifying, um, and then just, this is kind of an iterative process. The other thing I would say is also uh, one thing um, to be aware of is like um, not to automate too soon. So sometimes I'll build out this crazy, I, I'm guilty of this myself. I'll like build out this crazy automation and it'll be fantastic. And then I'll realize, oh, actually I'm going to do something different. Oh no, I've got to build this whole thing again. And you just realize, re realize that you sunk all this time to this, you know, crazy automation. So uh, usually, you know, if you find yourself doing repetitive tasks uh, that you're like, wait, why am I doing this all the time again? Then surely, you know, there, there must be some way of making this less painful. Um, that's usually a good signal that, you know, it's a good opportunity to add some automation there. The other thing I would say as well is uh, it's it's not a buy. This is a, from a, a course called Doing Time Right, uh, Steph Smith. Uh, and uh, she talked about how automation is not binary. I, I think this is quite a good, um, a good concept that, you know, it's not like automate all the things or nothing at all. Uh, it, often it's a bit of a blended process and it's a question of like, okay, where are the little elements of this process that we can automate uh, where it is uh, possible? Um, so going on to kind of choosing automation platforms, there are, there are billions out there. Uh, this is, this is a, a, a sort of an infographic around um, just the marketing automation this isn't even all automations. Um, so there are billions of platforms out there. Uh, it's going to be impossible to cover all of them, of course, um, for, you know, for this presentation. But if I, if we just think about pure automation platforms, um, these are the ones that come to top of mind for me. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you're looking to kind of basically, um, uh, you know, connect different platforms to each other, have triggers and actions. These are the kinds of platforms you use. I often recommend if you're starting out, um, Zapier or IFTTT. Zapier is probably the most powerful and the most commonly used. Uh, it's relatively simple. If you want to go even more simpler, IFTTT is, uh, is a good option for that. Um, and, uh, you know, Zapier, IFTTT, and most of these platforms, they have a sort of a, a, a free plan where you have a limited amount of automations you can set up. And so, you know, it's a good place to start uh, experimenting, uh, you know, and setting things up. The examples I'll give are in, will be, some will be in Zapier. I actually use Pably a lot. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for most people as it does get technical and it's not the most stable of platforms, um, but it is cheap as chips and they had a lifetime deal and I'm a sucker for lifetime deals. Um, so, uh, let me dive into a, a simple use case. Um, so coming from another comment here, um, from Crystal, thanks Crystal, uh, who asked about, you know, how can we go about, you know, automating recurring tasks? So this, this is, um, an automation that I think is relatively simple. Anyone could pretty much, uh, set it up and, um, I'll just go through the process of, uh, you know, actually just creating an account on Zapier just to show how. Anyone can really do this. All right. So we created our account whilst that's happening. Um, now what I, so th the, the specific um, kind of use case I'll show you is um, for, let's say, you know, we have, a, we have a virtual assistant, right? And we want to delegate uh, recurring tasks. How can we do that in an automated fashion? Um, well, one way to do this is to basically set up a separate uh, Google calendar and have notifications sent to them. Um, and I find this is a good, this is a, a good way of, um, easy because the thing is like in Zapier, we could theoretically, um, we could just kind of go, okay, we're going to set it up on a schedule. Um, and we're going to tell our, um, you know, our, um, you know, we're going to tell our virtual assistant that, uh, you know, they have to do is give them the information within this zap itself and specify it exactly. But the problem is you'd have to set up. A separate automation for every single task pretty much to do that right um you know so whether it's every day or you know certain time whatever um 
Whereas I find that actually calendar is just often the best way to schedule things. And you can set up a separate one for, um, so for example, VA tasks. And, and then if you think about it, um, you can essentially uh, map the, um, so let's see, doo -doo -doo. where do you go? Of course, live demos go never goes as they should, but. Uh, all right, so let's try it again, V8 tasks. I may have already actually created a calendar with that name. Maybe that's why it was uh, not playing nice. Okay, there we go. Um, so there's our V8 tasks too. Um, and, oh yeah, there we are, it's down there. Um, so if I create a, uh, a task within um, that calendar, uh, you know, I can give it time, you know, update spreadsheet, for example. Um, and then within the uh, descriptions, you know, description I can, Add the you know link to the spreadsheet, whatever it may be, um, and you know maybe a link to a document with uh, instructions. Um, then I can also uh, you know if I want that to be a recurring thing, like every week, I would basically um, obviously add that uh, that regularity. Um, and then I can basically instead of doing the schedule, I can uh, basically hook that calendar up. Uh, so, oops, yeah, so it's basically every single time that event starts, you know, an event starts on that calendar, um, it will then trigger, you know, an email to be sent out, or you can hook it up to uh, Slack or whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, you basically set it up. All right, let's see how I can... Yeah, of course, uh, live demos never go exactly how they should do. Um, but theoretically, you know, you should be able to just basically pull in that, um, you know, that calendar and, uh, and then you can just send out, you know, an email every single time a new event starts. Um, so that is one example, but, and then if you apply that, uh, you know, you can basically apply that to pretty much anything. So you actually, you could use this as a content calendar in a sense as well. So you could set up a separate Google calendar for content. Uh, and then you could basically say, okay, uh, you know, when we get a new event, send this out to Twitter. In fact, you, you can then start thinking about uh, branching logic. You can say, okay, well, if the event title starts with Facebook, we send it off to Facebook. If it starts with Twitter, we send it off to Twitter and so forth. Um, so you can apply this in a lot of different, uh, different ways. Jonathan, can uh, I pause and ask you a question yeah. about that automation in terms of using it as a content calendar? Yeah. Using a Google Calendar, if you wanted to uh, send out a, um, a graphic with your post, is that possible to do within the Google Calendar? Or would I need my Airtable? Uh, I believe you can. You know what? Uh, there's only one way to find out is to actually... So I'm just going to take... I can't, for, for whatever reason, of course, the live demos never go properly. I'm just going to take any old calendar uh, as an example. Uh, find a test trigger here. It really depends, like... Uh, in order to really tell, um, you need to actually have a look at what the action in Zapier or whatever tool you're using um, allows you, what parameters it takes. Um, so if I set this up, uh, just to show you, uh, there we go. Uh, so yes, it looks as though, um, yeah, you, you know, if you, if you basically, so say for example, if you just had a, a, a link to the actual picture or GIF or video or whatever it may be, gotcha. um, you know, it will actually, and I can actually, uh, we can do that ourselves. So if I just like pick any random old picture, just to show you that the actual trigger will, t will accept that, um, Let's take a let's take a doggy waving at us. Isn't that cute? Um, Good choice. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so if I that's a GIF, isn't it? I think there we go. Or yeah, well, um, that should work. Okay, uh, and if I just say you know hello, for example, and we fire that off. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, you see, this is where troubleshooting comes into play. And um... right. <laughs> this is why you have a 15 minute console. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> I will start it and you can finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, swiftly moving on. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but basically, um, you can you can apply that to pretty much any. I, I think the GIF format was, you know, I probably got the URL slightly wrong or something like that. But you can, yes, you can. Depending on what parameters the the action takes, um, you know, you can determine what's possible. And with social media, though, in most cases, you can use that. Uh, action. Jonathan. Yeah. Is uh are there any um we have a question from Lisa in the uh, Zoom meeting. She says, are there any parallel suggestions for Microsoft environments that are secure so they can't be linked to Google accounts or the like? How have you found a lot of these automation products working with really secure um, emails, calendars, and accounts? Uh, can you rephrase that question? So Sure, Lisa's looking yeah. for parallel suggestions. So this is back mm -hmm. to the Google Calendar, right? So using an automation with the Google Calendar, those aren't as secure as the ones she's working in her, with in her Microsoft environment, so probably a work environment um, that, that uses a secure Microsoft um, suite. So the, yeah. cal the Outlook Calendar is going to be a little bit different. And I didn't know how well some of these automation tools, does there tend to be a big barrier? Like if you're a government employee or you're working in healthcare where they have HIPAA laws or anything like that, yeah. you, you had any experience with playing with automation in those really secure environments? Uh, so my bet would be, uh, you know, go with the really tried and tested platforms like Zapier is, you know, enterprise. I'm pretty sure they must have some level of compliance I, I don't know the specifics. You probably have to con contact them, but their support is really good. Okay. But yeah, I would just say, you know, contact them and that they'll get back to you and they'll let you know exactly um, but, yeah, what the case is. Great. Um, cool. Um, if it's all right, can I, can I just like, um, I, I'd love to take questions maybe a little bit towards the end. Sure. Um, because That'd I've got be great. A, sh a shed load of stuff. Um, yeah, go ahead, everybody. And, and as you have questions, pop them in the chat and yeah. we'll do a little Q&A at the end. Alrighty, righty, Okay, cool. Um, so uh, let me go back to my slides here. Okay, this is another example of a trigger in Zapier. Um, this is actually from a video. A lot of the videos that I've come across around automation, they're a bit pants, to be honest. Like they're a bit like mediocre uh, use cases, but this one was actually pretty decent. And it's basically what it is doing is it's monitoring Twitter for a specific, it's a kind of an advanced query, um, but it's basically using the hashtag journal request, which is basically used by journalists where they're looking for sources. So it's a good, opportunity, a uh, good PR opportunity. The problem is there are like so many uh, people tweeting with this hashtag. Uh, it's difficult to, um, you know, identify exactly what you're looking for unless you're very specific. So for example, in this case, the chap's looking for where, you know, people are mentioning workflow automation or online business or e-commerce. Um, but you can use this and you kind of send an email to yourself um, and, uh, you know, you'll get notified that way or Slack or wherever it is. Um, just make, kind of moving on to kind of everyday automations. Uh, this is another comment that came in uh, from Dogger Khan, and uh, he talks about uh, needing help with uh, outreach and follow-up emails. So going with that out, outside the realm of the pure and um, what I would consider like the pure automation platforms, and maybe you know these slight more sort of edge casey or specific use case uh, scenarios. Um, there are two tools that I love uh, when it comes to email. Maybe you've heard of them already. Uh, Rebump is one and Streak is the other. Um, so if I just give you um, a live example of using uh, Rebump, for example. Um, so if I just pull up, uh, I'll show you. This is, the, um, this is an example of a what Rebump calls a bump. And basically what it is, is an option with your email when you send it out uh, to basically have it send all these follow-up sequence, sequences uh, if you don't hear a reply back. Um, so you basically set these up and you can you know, edit them and, and customize them to your liking. You can actually use you know, first name, last name parameters, personalize them as well. Uh, but this just prevents you having to continually follow up. Um, and, uh, and the well, the way, the way that looks like in, uh, in actually Gmail, uh, where I have it integrated, is uh, it's just this little button down here. So I just check that on. And I know that when I send this email out, if I don't hear a reply back, if I know it's unlikely that I'll get a reply, I can just switch that option on and, um, 
and uh, you know, it will just keep emailing for me. Um, you can also set up you know, different kinds of sequences like that. So the other one I'd like to, uh, that's worth mentioning around uh, email and follow up and all that kind of thing, uh, which I find um, really helpful is, uh, is Streak. So Streak does a couple of things. Uh, it has very good email tracking. So it will tell you when people have you know, read your email or, or, or clicked on something. Um, it actually has better tracking than a lot of other tools that I've used. Um, but the other thing I like about it is uh, it allows you to create all these email snippets. Uh, and so say, for example, I wanted to, uh, you know, double introduce someone instead of having to type this out every single time, I can say, oh, Heather wants to meet, um, you know, Lee and, uh, you know, Lee is, like I say, she, you know, she's a fabulous person and so forth. Um, and so, yeah, you know, you can set up lots of, lots of different um, uh, snippets like that. And the way that looks like, uh, what that looks like in practice is in order to set them up is you, um, yeah, you basically, you know, type out your, your template and then you simply say create from draft and then you can assign it a uh, snippet name and a shortcut code. So that way, you know, I typically use like, um, you know, double colons and then, you know, intro or something like that. Um, because that's, that, that's a string of characters that I don't usually use all together uh, to avoid it. Um, yeah, to avoid it, uh, basically typing when I, uh, inserting when I don't want it to insert. Um, uh, so yeah, that's streak. Another thing that it's good for as well is it allows you to set up email campaigns. Uh, so you can do mail merges. You can email multiple people, but personalize it at the same time. Um, I'll give you an example of this. Uh, so on the left sidebar, when you have this uh, Chrome extension installed, uh, you can set up a um, pipeline app like this. It's got a couple of templates that you can use already, or you can set it up to like your own um, yeah, customization. So for example, I might have you know, uh, different stages like um, contacted, uh, you know, replied, uh, and so forth. And then once I've set that up, I'll end up with something like this. Uh, I can in, you know, basically add my contacts and uh, email them all at once. Um, so if I just set up a new email merge, um, I can start typing out, uh, but I can also use variables, which allows you to put in uh, people's you know, first name. Um, let's say for example, you know, let's see who we're, we're emailing, uh, you know, Shakira and we're saying, hi Shakira, uh, would you like to be uh, on my new podcast? Um, uh, and, when we do that, we can also, if you hover over the recipients on the right side, you can actually see how the email appears for each individual person. Because one of the problems with sending out this bulk email is you're always wondering or trying to visualize what is this actually going to look like for the other person with these, you know, without these weird variable, variable, um, you know, names. So you can actually just sanity check, make sure people that's going to come through for people properly. Um, so uh, if I also uh, take a look at the messages sidebar. It also gives me the option to add follow-ups. So if people don't reply, so this is basically the same thing as Rebump, but doing it in a fashion where I can send it out to a bulk, you know, a, a number of people. And I can specify, um, you know, okay, uh, we'll wait four business days and then we'll send the follow-up email. Um, so yeah, that is that is streak. Uh, so when it comes to email outreach, those those are the two tools I, I highly recommend. Content automation. Uh, so Doug Can he's really on fire. This guy he's uh, he's got all the uh, all the questions for us. Um, so he has one around idea content collection curation for content, um, space learning. I would say this is probably a little bit outside the scope of how much I can actually include in this presentation. Um, I would say, uh, but just offhand, you know, some recommendations around this. Um, there's a tool called uh, Readwise, uh, which basically syncs your Kindle highlights as well as your Instapaper highlights, and it can deliver to them. It will basically like resurface uh, individual highlights you've taken in the past uh, in a periodic email. You can set it up to do that. that that's quite a good way of, um, of, of getting that info. It also syncs with other tools like uh, Rome Research. Uh, LogSec, I think, has an integration as well. Um, uh, and those are tools that have uh, spaced repetition functionality. At least I know LogSec does have spaced repetition uh, exam um, functionality in there. Um, like I say, a little bit out of scope, but th th those would be my um, those would be my recommendations there. Um, 
but on the same on the same subject, uh, there is also another approach you could use. You could use something like Notion. Um, Notion is a, a great tool for uh, you know creating databases, um, and this is a Chrome extension. It's not actually the official one. Uh, it's an unofficial one, uh, which is actually better than the official one, weirdly. Um, but I'll show you what this does, um, and maybe in a slightly different context, actually. Um, but let's say, for example, one of the things that I like doing is uh, buying good deals off AppSumo. Um, I'm just addicted to the thing. And um, so this is the, uh, the Chrome extension here. And um, what, I, what I like to do is, uh, like on Chrome, you have the option of assigning uh, keyboard shortcuts to extensions. So you can activate extensions um, by uh, pressing these, you know, whatever you define as the, the keyboard shortcut. So if I uh, go down to save to Notion, there's one here. So it's basically Alt N. And so if I go to an AppSumo deal and I, let's say I buy it, basically, um, this is my way of tracking what I've actually bought uh, because otherwise I've just for, I just forget all the deals that I buy. Basically, I've got a template set up here um, and it basically takes all that structured information um, and, uh, you know, I might just say, okay, uh, you know, when did I purchase it and so forth? Um, how much did I pay for it? You know, so I might add a few things myself, uh, but it basically scrapes the, you know, the image, all the information. Um, and then if I actually, uh, yeah, sorry, if I, so if I just do that again, um, yeah. So if I add that page, um, I'll show you what it looks like in Notion. And you can do this. So you could do this with like, um, I think actually the example they show here is where they're doing it with uh, a book on Goodreads. And so they're adding that to a, a database of books that you're currently reading or you, or you want to read or whatever. So you can see there, that's all the, all the information from that deal on that page. And then that just lets me catalog all the deals I bought. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, Cool. Okay. So, um, uh, so just on the same topic of uh, content curation, um, Lee also on fire here. Uh, she had a question. Well, she had a couple of questions here. Um, automated link checking. Um, so I guess this is where uh, you want to make sure that the links that you're uh, producing are um, still, uh, you know, they're not defunct. They're not dead. Um, I know there is a tool that will allow you to do this in WordPress uh, called Broken Link Checker. Checker, it's a plugin. Um, there are probably others out there. Uh, if you're trying to, you could basically probably download all your social tweets or, or whatever it is that you want to double check. Um, and I'm sure there's probably another tool that you could run to to figure out which ones are defunct from that. Um, there are a bunch of uh, tools around summarization. Um, uh, that are kind of interesting uh, to do with artificial intelligence. Um, and I'll just show you like one or two, um, bear with me. Uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, so there's one called Inksprout. And basically what that will allow you to do is uh, input the URL of a, um, uh, of, of, uh, of an article that you're trying to summarize. I don't know, let's say if we go to, our guardian, um, actually that's a little bit depressing news. Let's not do that. Um, uh, so for example, I've got a story about Bitcoin. Um, sounds like something that's quite good to, uh, to share. Um, this is basically an artificial intelligence tool that will summarize that for you, um, you know, and kind of give you some captions. It's hit or miss, I, I would say a little bit with this. Um, there's another one that's similar to this called Genie as well. This is used for more for academic research, but some people also use it to summarize uh, content as well. Um, I also find uh, just in general, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of uh, artificial intelligence writers. I use one called Japser, Jasper, but there are loads and they, they pretty much do very similar things, um, particularly the templates around the Ada framework, which is a copywriting framework. Um, so say for example, if I wanted to Write, it, write something about go go done. Maybe it's for the web copy or something. Uh, and let's say you know I'm going to write go go done as a virtual co working accountability group. Um, let's see what it uh, what it comes up with. Ah, there we go. Um, so you see, um, I've, I haven't actually given it very much, but uh, the output it comes up with is not actually that bad. Uh, struggling to stay on top of your work, feeling you're uh, but not getting anywhere. You're not alone. A lot of people feel that way. There is a solution. 
introducing GoGo Done, the virtual co-working and accountability group that will, Heather, how does that sound? Not bad, right? I love it. I think it sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> it can it can be a little bit hit, and, hit or miss. I think this one's pretty, pretty, pretty decent. Um, but I generally find with the with the these artificial intelligence writing tools, those the ADA framework and the PAS, those two copywriting frameworks, they pretty much nail them. Problem, agitate, solution, and ADA stands for attention, interest, desire, action, or something like oh yeah, well, it's got it there. Attention, interest, desire, action. Yeah. Um, cool. So um, so yeah, that that's sort of a, you know, that's uh Let's see what else I've got here around. I think there were one or two other things around. Oh yes, um, kind of just what something else on the on the topic of um, uh, useful Chrome extensions that just kind of automate some of the um, um, you know annoying repetitive tasks. Uh, there's one that I use here. It's Bitly. You may know Bitly as a link shortening tool, um, but I use the extension all the time, and I sign it to Alt L. And that way, um, I can simply just press Alt L, whatever page I'm on, it will create a short link and just add it to my um, well, clipboard. Yes. So it's like I can just basically paste it everywhere. Easy peasy, immediately. Um, yeah, just a small one, but, um, but very helpful. Um, so yeah, and then just also um, on the topic of content creation, uh, when it comes to graphics, um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Figma. Figma is a tool that's generally used mostly by uh, user experience designers, but I actually find it really handy because it has, because it allows you to define common elements across all your graphics. Uh, it makes it a very powerful graphic tool. And I'll show you. I'll show you an example of this. Um, uh, so, for example, we use this uh, as part of our, our podcast. Um, you know, we're setting up park podcasts for people. Um, like all we have to do is, uh, you know, define, say their, uh, you know, their artwork once and, um, you know, so I'll just give you an example. If I just change this show, um, to a different, uh, to a different show, you can see, oh, you see, we have a new, now we have a new, um, yeah, yeah now we have a new Twitter cover, you see, for example, and we can also see how that appears, how that would appear on their Twitter profile, for example, uh, as well as LinkedIn, so forth, and then on, on personal profiles. Um, we can also apply the same thing to the color scheme as well. So we just define this once, we define the global variables. Uh, I'll show you an example of this. Uh, so for example, if we just change this to say red, um, you'll see that, oh, you see, okay, the Twitter cover changes to red. Um, and then the same applies for, you know, the rest of the templates as well. Um, yeah, and then the same applies for, you know, so basically every single episode that we, you know, we produce, we just swap in out the, uh, the image of the guest. Um, you know, if we wanted to, uh, change their name, we just change it once and then it would basically apply it across all our, you see Heather Chavin, Heather Chavin and so forth. Yeah. Get the idea. Um, and then finally, uh, when we want to, uh, basically use any of those, one thing you can do uh, with Figma is you can simply uh, copy from Figma itself and uh, it will take that asset and you can just paste it straight into say uh, Twitter, for example. See, that was pretty quick. Um, the other thing uh, when it comes to actually using the images or exporting them, you just like select the ones and then you just export them all in one go. Um, yeah, so th this is what we this is what my team uses, and it just makes things you know a lot faster, basically. Um, great, and uh, yes, okay. So, um, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about content automation. Actually, Heather, I know that you um, you mentioned to me before that you had a situation where you had content calendar in Airtable, and you're trying to figure out how to. You were you at the moment you're sending off to Buffer, I think it is. Um, but you're looking for a, a more efficient way of managing that that distribution, basically, right? Yeah, I moved to Airtable because my content calendar was a train wreck because I was mm. trying to do it in Google Sheets and it just doesn't organize well and it's it's just a mess to look at visually. So I popped into yeah. Airtable and they had a great template that has all the pieces. And as soon as I saw the template, I knew there was a way to automate it, probably with with Zapier 
to get it to those social channels. Haven't dug into that yet because I'm just yeah. converting everything over. So I'm using yeah. both Buffer and a, and a uh, service called Missing Letter, which I really like. It uses mm-hmm. that same technology that you had from, I'm forgetting which um, which tool it was, but that did the summary that took the pieces from the um, longer article and chopped them up. It'll do that with a blog post and auto post it over a longer period of time for evergreen content. So that's that content. Um, on a preset schedule and then buffer for next week and the week after. Yeah, yeah. I also had a look at the uh, the triggers in, in uh, Zapier 4 Airtable. I think they're actually a little bit limited. Um, it's basically like new entry or new entry in a certain view, but that's it. But Airtable does have, it has automations kind of baked into the product itself from my understanding. So yeah, yeah. They're, they're advertising it to me. I have not dug in yet. Yeah. Um, and, and with that said, so I, I realized uh, I've got like one section left, but I realize it is, you know, past the, the 30 minutes. So I wanted to just, you know, check in and see and see what's the best way to proceed. So I put a couple of messages in all the different channels that people can get the replay, no problem. So if they have to take care of their schedules, fly away, uh, come back and watch the replay. But if you have time, I absolutely have time. Okay, cool. All right. So I'll just uh, carry on here then. Um, so finally, I just wanted to touch a little bit more on maybe more business related automations. Uh, one I wanted to touch on here. Um, so this is from a presentation that a chap called Tyler Gillespie gave. Uh, he is a, he's an entrepreneur and uh, he helps people basically set up productized services. Um, so they're service businesses, but he he shows people how to create really great onboarding experiences for new co- clients. And this is part of um, what he recommends around um, creating that really great experience. So there's there's a lot of things you can do around automation. For example, when you have someone, you know, uh, pay for a service or a product, uh, obviously, you know, you can send them the welcome email, but handwritten here, um, and this is actually a nice way of mapping it out as well to also just visualize it conceptually and understand what's going on. Handwritten is basically, um, let me show you the website. Uh, actually, bear with me. Um, so what handwritten is, is uh, it's basically machine handwritten cards, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's basically a machine with a, a robotic arm and a pen that writes for you. <laughs> Uh, so it's handwritten, like it, it does come across as handwritten. Uh, you know, the card is handwritten. It's just handwritten by a mach- machine, basically. Um, so you can basically set these up and send these out automatically to new clients. Um, Thanks.io is another version of that, uh, which is, yeah, it's quite interesting. It does, you can do things like if someone lands on your website, it will detect their location and where, and, and actually send them out uh, cards uh, just based on their location without anything happening. Um, and then another one that, that Tyler also recommends is, uh, is, is slide broadcast, which is basically ringless voicemail. And what that means is, uh, it's, these are voicemails that you can record and send to people. Um, but that it basically bypasses their ringing and just goes straight to voicemail basically. Um, so you can send people like welcome messages, um, even birthday message. You could probably, you know, trigger this to send people, birthday messages on their birthday maybe that's a bit yeah i'm not sure you really necessarily want to automate that another one i really like that um that tyler mentions and this is all in a, in a video and a document that he actually i'll share the document and this is the video um i'll show the, the link to the slides later um but it includes all this all this information uh, around that and print me one is basically uh a service where you send them a pdf and they will bound that for you and send it out so if you think about it, you know you have a new customer and they can receive their handbook and they'll have something in flesh in person, uh, which is which is great because I, I know nowadays you know, we're doing so much virtually, uh, but to be able to actually send something to someone, have them have it in their hands, whether it's a manual or, or you know, a guide of some sort, uh, really makes a big difference. Um, so yeah, Tyler Gaspi, I definitely, oh, and that's, yeah, that's, uh, oh, actually, you know, oh, what I did want to, the final thing I just did want to show is I, I did promise that I was going to show a little bit of a crazy uh, one of these slightly crazy automations, um, uh, which I have set up just to show you kind of what, what things are possible. Uh, so if I, so, um, I have a podcast, right? It's called leaders consulting. Um, it's an interview show and, uh, obviously, you know, when you bring on a guest, there's a non-boarding process, right? Um, they need to know, uh, 
you know, what, what, what's the process like, you know, what, what equipment do they need and so forth. Um, and there are lots of moving pieces. And so I'll show you how I, uh, this is for a personal show. This is slightly different from the way we do it with the clients. Um, but uh, typically when someone books an interview, they go through, you know, they say what their contact details are and so forth. That's great. We try and make that as frictionless as possible. Uh, but once they, they finish that, um, that then, um, once they, they book that, it triggers an automation. Um, what that automation does is it basically takes the timestamp from the uh, from when the, the interview was booked. It creates a subfolder where we keep all the um, the image assets. This is where we will eventually keep them. What that looks like is um, something like this. Um, so it creates one of these folders automatically based on um, you can see it pulls in variables like, you know, what's the name of the guest? Uh, what was the date of when it happened? It moves across uh, one or two common images that we always send people, which is basically, um, uh, which is basically, you know, an as featured, which they, you know, they can put on a, you know, on their website if they, if they want to. Um, so it does that. Uh, it creates a, a row in Notion uh, in the editorial calendar. It creates a guest entry uh, with some of that information. Um, and then what happens after that, they, you know, obviously they book the interview, uh, they're forwarded to an intake form, which takes more data, you know, around, um, so we try and make that initial step very frictionless, but this is where we ask for a little bit more, um, information. So, um, uh, you know, what, what sort of topics they want to speak to and so forth. So that get, that gets cross-referenced into, um, um, into the same notion table. So we add that data there. Um, so yeah, they fill in that form. Uh, we receive a Slack notification. Um, it gets added to our CRM. We then parse their Twitter handle if they send it to us, and then we send them an automatic tweet. Um, so that's sent from our, from our Twitter account. Um, they're actually also added to a, a Twitter list as well. Um, of you know guests on the show, uh, so that also ha that happens automatically behind the scenes. Um, then when they actually uh, when we've recorded the episode, what I do so I use something called uh, Alfred, uh, which is a Mac only tool. Um, but I basically have I basically type uh, LFC Leaders of Consulting new episode, and then I type the name of the the uh, basically the folder name. Um, of the episode and that sets, so that once I've done that, um, let's say for example, uh, let's say I was interviewing Heather. Um, what that does is it sets up a templated task in ClickUp that's automatically assigned to our team. Um, and so I'll just show you uh, where that happens. Probably, you know, it might take one or two seconds to come through. Um, and also show you in Alfred. Um, so what's happening there is um, this is sort of what what uh, Alfred calls a workflow, uh, which you can basically assign to like a keyword, um, and it sends out what's known as a webhook, which triggers uh, that automation. Um, the automation itself. Uh, so there we go. How to chime in, and you can see the subtasks are assigned to my my team. I'm going to just unassign it so they don't get pinged about that. Um, and then within each subtask has, uh, you know, a link to the instructions and that sort of thing. So that's basically, you know, that gets done. And then the next step for me is to, they basically assign it to me to review it. Um, so yeah, I could probably go into a little bit more detail uh, around that automation, everything that happens. Actually, I will, I will just mention when the episode is actually published, uh, what that looks like. So we use, we actually, I actually use Zapier to, we take the RSS feed from the podcast. Uh, that triggers when we have a new episode that's published. It creates a new spreadsheet row. Pavly picks up that spreadsheet row, um, basically looks through our, um, our, our content calendar, identifies the episode that corresponds with the title, um, and then pulls out information from that to basically send out automatic tweets, Instagrams that use their handles um, and uh, you know, depending on whether they do have the handles or not, it does it does a different thing. Basically, what we end up is uh, with um, a social media account that looks something like uh, you know sends out tweets that look like this, basically. Um, 
yeah, so there's the last one with uh, Michael Rojek, for example. Yeah, oh, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just bring up my last slide. And I think that's, uh, I think that's all I've got. That's it, nothing more? No, nah, <laughs> Because my more. mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, so I just had like the last, um, there we go. And. Wow. Fabulous, I'm gonna grab. And I will put um, <clears throat> the link to the 15 minute consult in the chat as well. As a reminder to folks. Uh, that they can have you help them solve their automation problems. Um, you up for a couple of, I think, fairly quick questions? Yeah, sure. Fire away. So one for streaks, the email merge. Um, any issues with spam filters, spam rating? Um, how does what does Google think about? Um, that's a pretty good question. I mean, uh, I think the main thing that will determine that is your email deliverability, and that's kind of a bigger, bigger topic. Um, but like, let's say, you know, for example, having a G Suite account uh, will often improve your uh, deliverability, making sure it's a warm account as well. It's not new uh, that you send. If it is a new one, you can do things to warm it up. Um, there are, there, I, I'm trying to write my, I, I know I've heard people talk about if you send very similar emails, sometimes that can affect your deliverability. But I, I found like I use streak. I don't use it on like, I think, to really, to really run into that problem, I think you need to be sending like hundreds of thousands of, of emails. Um, gotcha. and I, I think that's really what, you know, the email service providers are trying to prevent people from, you know, just going bananas with spam. So, right. exactly. Yeah. And last question for the beginners who are watching this, because your last sequence was epic and I am not at the skill level where I could build that. So if you're looking to get something with training wheels and get started, how would you look at, um, what would you recommend for the best place to start? Where did you start at the very beginning or more towards the beginning? Yeah, I think, uh, so I mentioned, you know, IFTTT and Zapier, uh, those are good like starting points and they do a lot of hand holding, and they have lots of content around like, okay, here's some very basic scenarios and you can play around with those and start to really understand things. Um, and then later on, you can, you can start looking into, okay, you know, how can I maybe look at, you know, branching logic or like filtering out certain things and this or that. Um, it's also, I mean, I'm sure they're obviously, you know, have got the consult, but there are other, you know, people who do automation consult consultations. If you're really trying to set something up, uh, you know, long-term, um, and save yourself, you know, time and agonizing over, um, how to figure it out, um, I highly recommend that. I do that often with, you know, with ClickUp when I first set it up, you know, had a consultant, same with Notion, um, even though a lot of Notion you can figure out yourself, uh, there are people out there who just, you know, they really nerd out on it. <laughs> right. right. I'm a ClickUp user, so I was excited to see that you use that as well. So yeah. I certainly don't, I don't have a team, a large team, so I don't have to worry too much about the sharing, but, but, yeah. I, but a lot of those, a lot of programs have into automations built into them. So you know, Gmail has some automations built in. Click up in Gmail, talk to one another. And so I can turn a, a, an email into a task and things like that. So I think there's, for anyone who's overwhelmed, anyone else who's a little overwhelmed, but really excited, um, I think kind of looking at and seeing where automation already lives in the software you're using. And then I think the IFTTT and uh, Zapier are great spots to, because of that handholding, for mm, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. That does it for us. I cannot thank you enough to anyone who is uh, listening and watching. Definitely take uh, Jonathan up on his consultation, that 15 minute consult. Uh, and you can always find him on LinkedIn as well at John B. Strong. So thank you again, Jonathan. I can't, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. I feel like it's a look into my potential future. <laughs> Excellent. Glad it was, uh, glad you enjoyed it. Great. Thanks everyone. Cheers.